Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to revisit a project that I did where I added dry dye powder to some wet non-superwash yarn, dip dyed it, watched how the colors spread and today we're going to be doing that again but I want to do one of the experiments that popped into my head while we were doing that most recent video and that is I want to add blue dye to one skein of yarn, this pink dye to the other, but then dip them in the same pot and then see how the spread and everything works and looks. Uh, it's possible that everything might blend and combine, but some amount of the dye will stay put where it's placed on the yarn. So mainly, I'm just really curious to see what's going to happen. <laughs> In my catering steam pan here, I have our bare yarn. We've got 200 grams of Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. Uh, all of this yarn I pre-soaked in just some plain water with no added acid. Now in between to help keep things a little bit separate is the yarn mop I'm going to use today. So on this yarn here, I will be wiping the my hands after I've speckled. And so we'll be getting some of that indigo blue and berry crush on here. But hopefully I'll keep it so that way the pink is on one side, the blue is on the other, at least at first. So that way we can try to keep the color separate and keep the yarn from touching until we're ready to go and dip dye it. At least that is my vision. Now, if you would like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I use in my videos and the, these yarn bases, uh, Wool of the Andes is 100% non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool, and Stroll is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. I always try to link to the yarn bases I use, so that way you can try to replicate my results at home. Now, the one additional note that I have is that my tap water is slightly acidic to begin with, so some amount of color will start striking onto the yarn before I even add it to acid or anything like that. So that is the one little caveat I want to have. But now, I'm going to go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves, and we're going to add dye onto this yarn. Okay, I have a feeling that this is going to go really, really quickly. Uh, mainly because we're just going to add one color to each skein. And I guess, I mean, I'm not even being like super patchy or anything with it. I'm just literally adding that indigo blue all over this yarn. Then wiping off my gloves. I love indigo blue. It is not very purple at all, <laughs> but it's a gorgeous color. Okay, now Berry Crush. Hopefully I don't use too much of this color and cause any kind of problem. Uh, and I'm saying that because I don't use this as much as I've used a bunch of my other pinks. So I don't want to overdo it. But we never know. Okay, but you can see these two colors. The reason why I picked to do the pink and the blue is that if they blend and combine, then we're gonna know. We're going to know. Okay. I'm drying off my hands. And now I'm gonna flip our blue yarn. I want the zip tie to still be accessible. Oh no. I got some blue on the pink. That's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I'm going to flip the yarn mop too. Wipe my fingers off. The, the yarn is going to touch. It's going to touch when we add it uh, into the pot at the same time. Uh, so it's, it is what it is. <laughs> the goal is just to prevent as much as I guess I can for now. All right. These are pigmented colors. I wonder why I don't use the Berry Crush more. It does seem to spread pretty far. Oh, that's probably pretty good. It doesn't matter that the coverage is not perfectly even over on the yarn. We're just trying to get some 
amount of coverage. But yeah, you can see that this is spreading a lot on our yarn mop. I do want my fingers to be dry and clean before I go back into the dye jar because we don't want to introduce moisture in, but we also don't want to introduce other pigments. So if I had to guess, <laughs> we're going to end up with a fairly pink, um, more pink spread than the blue, but I can't say for sure. We don't know for sure. But it's possible the blues might strike a little faster than the pinks. Okay. And I definitely went over onto the pink sign with that, but that's okay. Uh, now I am going to let the yarn sit uh, for at least 10 minutes because I want to give these dye powders a chance to sink into the yarn a little bit. And in fact, you'll probably notice that the pinks have started to spread out a little bit from where I originally placed them. But some of these blues that I added more recently are still sitting on top of the fiber and have not yet sunk in. I had planned to keep the camera in the same place for the 10 minutes. I did not plan on it running the whole time. So I don't know if we're going to have a, the most subtle time lapse ever <laughs> or what. But the dyes have sunk in more. And this is what the yarn looks like in the before. Let's go get ready to dip dye it. In this kettle, I have 16 cups of water. And I'm going to add... Ooh, I think three tablespoons of white vinegar. And now very gently and very carefully, I'm picking up our yarn and we're gonna start dip dyeing it. And immediately, I am seeing our colors spread. It definitely feels to be more pink spreading than the blue. But that's okay, and we'll see. I mean, they're each kind of staying in their own halves a little bit. I did that pretty fast. And I imagine that there'll be some transfer going on in between the two as well. But who knows? Who knows what we're going to see? But I guess now we're going to let this heat for 30 minutes. And as for our yarn mop, <laughs> uh, I'm now going to attempt to wipe up a lot more of this dye. And we will probably put this into a leftover dye bath uh, in a little bit. I have one that's going to open up in about 10 minutes. And don't worry, I will show you that process. But now all of the dye powder that we have in the kitchen is wet. There's nothing dry out anymore. Okay, this dye bath is where I'm planning on adding this yarn. And I'm doing a dip dye-esque thing. There is water uh, in here with acid, and there was no acid in our yarn yet. But you can see, adding the blue section in, not very much color spread. Adding our pinks, however, a lot more is now spreading out. So whatever the pink pigments are, eh, there's some blues that are spreading. But whatever those pink pigments are, definitely, ooh, there's a big section of some blue there. We can work that out. Uh, whatever those pinks are, are definitely gonna take some more time to absorb. And so I think that's why on the dipping yarn, we saw more purple over on the blue versus the reverse. But ultimately, like on this non super mush yarn, a lot of this dye is really just staying put. And I guess this goes to show why this is a project I do on non super wash yarn because. They, we get a lot more spread <laughs> than if we were to use the superwash. But anyway, um, I am going to heat this for 30 minutes, um, then let it cool, wash it off camera. And when the timer goes off, we'll go take a closer look at our non-superwash yarn. Our yarn mop is bubbling over in the background, so that's what we hear. But let's lift up this yarn and see what we can see. It's been 30 minutes. I'm still seeing a hint of pink 
in the pan. I'm definitely seeing pink transfer uh, onto the blue skein. Do we see? There's like a hint of blue transfer on to the pink one. But ultimately, the colors are pretty separate. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this yarn in the pot to cool. Uh, there's definitely, I think, a little bit more purple notes over on the blue one. That's sort of what we saw with the Leave No Dye Behind skein. We saw that the pinks are spreading out a lot more than those other colors. I turned the heat off, but I'm going to add just two tablespoons of white vinegar into our pot, and I'm going to leave the yarn in here to cool off a like for a while because we want the yarn to be completely cool before I wash it. But man, this is really interesting. The colors do spread. They're softer than the way they were in the pan when before we had added it. And if we had had acid there and gone and steam set it, we would have had more speckles and splotch color on our yarn than what we do here. And Again, we could have also pre-soaked the yarn in acid. I don't think that would have made a huge difference. But what we did see is that the colors are captured pretty much from where that yarn is located. Now, it's possible if we had a bigger volume of water in this pot, I think we had 16 cups in here. If we had had 32 cups, then there would have been a lot more volume. Any dye coming off of the yarn could have then been captured by the other skein, maybe. But I don't feel the need to try out that variation of this. I think I'm going to stick more to the multiple of colors of each on all the yarn that's going to go into the pot at once, just because I love that more variegated soft effect that we get doing that. But this certainly was really fun to try out. And I enjoyed seeing like the kind of gradient that we had from where like at the middle the colors blended a little bit. I thought that was fun. But anyway. I will see you when it's time to wash the yarn. Let's wash all of this cooled off yarn together. Because why not? But yeah, the, the blue definitely took up some more purple, I think, than the purple took up blue, which is interesting. Although, you know, there's some more purple notes in this Berry Crush versus the brighter pink. So maybe both took up a little bit of something. Um, I am going to add a drop of dish soap to our rinse and then fill this up. Okay, and let's see. But I am very optimistic that we're not going to see any bleeding. So I'm now going to go ahead and finish rinsing out all the soap. And then I'm going to put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, so we can take a closer look at our colors. When we take a look at all of this yarn, you can kind of tell the areas that must have been near it. On our pink, there are a few sections that are more purple. Those were this edge right there, especially in this edge. That was probably in contact with our blue. And similarly, you can see where more of the pink either rubbed off or after maybe the initial contact between the two skeins, maybe some of the powder just stuck here. Now, in the last video, when I dipped the yarn in, I didn't keep dipping and moving it around a lot. And I used that same overall technique here, which gave us two very pretty yarns, but we don't have a lot of crossover, at least not with respect to the blue. Uh, more pink went to the blue, I think, than the other way around. And so I think something like this could, in theory, be fun to play with again if, when dipping, I treat it more like dip dyeing and lower the yarn in and remove it over and over. Uh, so that way there is more mixing and blending. And so then maybe some amount of this pink would have stuck to this yarn already. And same with some amount of the blue, but then a lot might go out into the dye bath that's captured by both. Maybe, maybe, but I'm not really sure if that actually would work that way. Uh, it's just something to think about and something to consider. I think I'm much more likely to add all of the colors to each of the skeins before dipping it into the pot because I like that variegated effect. I like having all the colors on all of the yarn and then it makes the more crowded pot at the end just work. The yarn mop is a lot of fun and has 
I mean obviously elements of our pink and our blue. There is definitely some blending for some, some more purples, but overall, again, I think that the pinks spread a lot more here. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this dyeing project. I really enjoy taking some ideas that pop into my head while filming a video and then turning that into its own video. I'm really glad that I gave this thought a moment, even if we didn't get like super dramatic, interesting results. The results are still beautiful and fun. I just think we could have ended up with something similar if we had used our blue and added a little bit of the pink dye onto that and then dip dyed it. And similarly here, if we had used mostly the pink with a little bit of blue. And so then you would have a more reproducibly consistent type of experience and colorway. But you tell me. Should I revisit this in the future or should I move on to some other kind of project? <laughs> Please subscribe, turn on notifications, give the video a thumbs up. All of this really helps the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel continue to grow. If you want other ways to help support the content here, you can become a lab partner or even last minute lab partner. The main difference between these two videos, and both come with 100 grams of yarn dyed in a video and multiple shout outs in the video, but when you become a last minute lab partner, you pick the yarn base and a project that I've already started filming. And so then you get some hints about the technique and the colors that I'm using in the project. And so that's the last minute lab partner. If you become a lab partner, you pick a yarn base, tell me your least favorite colors, and then I start filming the video after you have signed up and purchased the listing. And so that's the main difference there. You can find more details in both listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I also have both of them linked down in, I think, just about every video description uh, for every video that I post here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.